In tonight's Project Earth, an oyster can do so much more than turn a grain of sand into a pearl. Experts say one tiny shellfish, a California native, may play a big role in curbing the impacts of climate change. Elizabeth Cook reports on an Olympian quest. At Swan Oyster Depot in San Francisco, the line forms early. If you're lucky to get a seat, you're in for a treat. We just had the Olympia oysters, which were phenomenal, phenomenal. The Olympia oyster, small as a silver dollar, but big in flavor. They're the only oyster native to the West Coast. But I grew up eating this oyster, and I think they're just fantastic. Olympias are not endangered, but their abundant numbers have dramatically declined, largely due to overharvesting during the gold rush, as well as pollution and loss of habitat. Now, scientists, researchers, and volunteers are working to restore the Olympias in the wild, where they once historically thrived. We are here to bring back oysters to Elkhorn Slough. We're at an estuary. Dr. Estuary Kirsten Wasson is, is leading the pioneering the effort at this estuary at the heart of Monterey Bay. We are just doing it with optimism and hoping that if we can bring back a million oysters to Elkhorn Slough, they'll be self-sustaining, and today is one step towards that goal. In the slough, the restored oysters won't be harvested. Their intended role? To filter water, stabilize the shoreline, and provide habitat for other creatures. All big benefits as the planet warms. So it's really important that we help to um, restore this population. First stop, the hatchery at Moss Landing Marine Laboratories. We have baby individual oysters. Here, wild Olympias are borrowed from the slough to breed babies that will go back to the slough. In a hatchery, we can control a lot of the environment and we can make sure that those little babies make it through to being juveniles. The baby oysters require tender, loving care, microalgae for food, the right temperatures and plenty of fresh water. They're very needy and very dirty, so they are really fun to take care of, but they uh, need a lot of attention. When ready, they'll attach to hard surfaces, including these large clamshells. That we actually collect in the slough. The team carefully gathers the oyster encrusted shells, puts them in special mesh bags, and packs them in a cooler. Next stop, the slough, where the scientists and volunteers are ready to jump into action. Elkhorn Slough needs a lot of help. I believe that natural like habitats should be maintained. The work is unusual. Yeah, we're taking count of how many baby oysters are alive on these clamshells. They record the data and then secure each clamshell to a PVC pipe. Once all the oysters are counted, secured and tagged, about 80,000 babies, the rubber booted volunteers caravan down to the estuary. Please just check the zip ties that they're actually locked. Here they form a brigade and carefully pass the pipes down to the scientists who plant them into the muddy goop and low tidal waters of Hester Marsh. On my watch, I don't want to see the oyster disappear <laughs> from Elkhorn Slough. I ate it already. I couldn't wait. It's delicious. Back at Swan's, patrons think the effort is well worth it. It's a win-win for everybody. If what they're trying to establish down in the slough works, it'll be incredible. An Olympic quest for future generations. <laughs> Olympias take a few years to grow compared to the non-native Pacific oysters. And for more information on the restoration project, just go to kpix.com.